love. His love is awesome. It's what we are free in. And the love of God makes us one in Christ. That's why we are free. You know, when we were sinners, when we were in the world, we were bound. We were slaves. We, we didn't know what love was. We knew what the worldly kind of, uh, worldly kind of uh, give me love and I'll give you back. But God's love is, I give you love freely. That's what we're free in His love. That means we're not bound. To it. God's not a conditional yeah. God. You know, He's unconditional yeah. in His love. That's why we're free in mm. His love. That's yeah. a nice song. That's a beautiful one. Yeah, and you know, you can find that, you know, the word perfect peace that we were singing about, it's in Isaiah. Isaiah 26, 3. Mm. You know, maybe you were wondering, wow, perfect peace. Jesus said, I have come to give you peace. And if you see Isaiah, Isaiah says, perfect peace. Let's see that in Isaiah chapter 26. And it says in verse 3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him, mm. because he trusts in thee. And verse 4 says, Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Amen. So over there in verse 3, you have the word perfect peace. Perfect. 
happy. You notice that it says that when you keep your mind stayed on Him. Mm. That word mind yeah. also means thoughts and imaginations. Yeah. yeah, and you know it's kind of hard to really, uh, you know, stay in perfect peace when you're, you know, constantly confused and mm. you know in frustration, worried. Yeah. yeah, we need to be in perfect peace because when we keep our mind stead on the Lord, stead on His Word, we really have perfect peace. Mm. And, and the, the perfect helper. peace is not the worldly kind of peace, you know, world yeah. peace. Yeah. It's not that kind of yeah. a peace treaty like a thing, you know, people say, okay, war is over, now there's peace. God's kind of peace is from within. You know, when you have a peace on the inside, it shows out on the outside. Mm. You know, you won't get agitated by things. Yeah. You know, if somebody annoys you, sometimes you tend to get tensed up and, yeah. oh, I just want to get that guy, you know. But the Lord's peace will say, you know, stay calm, mm. forgive. Lord's peace is yeah. about forgiving. It's perfect peace. That's why it's perfect. Yeah. It's not just some kind of a peace that is for a moment. No. It's perfect. It's completely, you know, in your mind, when you have the perfect peace of God, you will know how to stay calm in situations. You know, sure. like we spoke about in the last program, mm -hmm. how Jesus, he said, peace be still. And mm -hmm. you know, when he was in the boat, actually, when they were going to the other side, you know, he was totally at peace. He was sleeping in the middle of the storm. I don't think he even knew that there was a storm. They woke him up because mm. he was fast asleep. Of course, he was sleepy because he had just you know, taught the people and then he was just you know, wanting to take a rest. Mm. And so he was at peace because he knew they were going to the other side. Yeah, but yeah. It, it's not only, you know, okay, if Jesus was in my boat, I'd be at peace. Jesus is in your boat. Yeah. When you say, Jesus, come into my heart, he comes into the boat of your heart mm. and he comes and lives inside of you. Yeah. So now if you're facing turmoil, if you're facing frustration situations like that you can't handle, Perfect mm. peace is on the inside yeah. of you. And we've been talking about declaring your future. Mm. And really, peace has to be a part of your future. That's right. I don't think you can have a bright future in being in confusion. Yes, thoughts of peace. Yeah, yes, thoughts of peace. Thoughts so of your peace. future can be full of peace as your mind is staying on the Lord. Yes, for sure, outside there'll be confusion and turmoil. But you can be at perfect peace when your mind is staying on the Lord. Mm, that's right. So that's a powerful thing to know about God's peace. So God, we finished up on, we wrapped up in the last episode and said God is the only one who can reveal your future to you. And you notice throughout the Old Testament, God had to use people to bring forth His Son into the world. He had to mm. use people to speak or prophesy the coming of Jesus. Mm. And God uses our words to bring our future mm. to pass. Yeah. You know, God, God told Adam, um, who, uh, Abraham, you know, God told Abraham, he went up to the mountain to sacrifice his son. And uh, he, I believe he saw the, the cross. I believe he would have seen Jesus in, a, in maybe a vision. The Lord showed him and the, he said, the Lord will provide for himself a lamb. So he spoke in that moment, he prophesied the coming of Jesus, the mm. lamb. And it says in, um, in uh, what is it, Luke or something? It says that he is the, or John, I think it says, that he's the lamb that takes the sin away from yeah. the world. Yeah. He's the lamb of God. So what we see that was prophesied over Jesus did come to pass. Mm. But the important thing is it was said. Mm. It had to come out of the mouth of people. Yeah. And you know, there's an amazing scripture in Proverbs 13. Proverbs is really, it's a wonderful book of wisdom. I mean, really, when you are walking in the wisdom of God, Really, you can you know handle situations, and that's piece of wisdom here that you really need to see. Talking about um, your future, um, go with me to Proverbs thirteen, and when Proverbs thirteen, um, verse two, and we'll read verse three as well. Now it says in verse two, it says, "A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence." And verse 3 says, He that keeps his mouth keeps his life, but he that opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Ooh. You know, that's so true, no? You know, those who um, open their lips wide have destruction. They just Pretty blabber good. everything yeah. they want. They say anything they want without thinking. They really have a destructive life. Mm. You know, but it says here very clearly, when you keep your mouth, you keep your life. Now, let me explain that. In, first, we'll go to verse 2. It says that a man shall eat good. Now, what does it mean to eat? Well, to eat good really doesn't just mean eat, literally. It means you will be well favored and you will have prosperity. It says by the fruit of your mouth. By the fruit of your mouth. So what is coming out of your mouth can really cause the, the things in your life 
to take place. Like for example, if you're speaking God's word out of your mouth, you're speaking, God supplies all my needs in the midst of lack, in the midst of want, and you know you've sown your seed, and you know that God is going to provide for you, you are really going to eat good of what you've been speaking. Mm. And are. words are seeds, right? Yeah. Words are seeds. Just like you tell a farmer to sow seed, he goes and sows seed in the field, and he receives the harvest of what he sowed, our life is the result of what words we sow. Mm, yeah, because you know, it, actually that's really true, you know, when you talk about words being seeds, because words are not just something to be taken lightly. You know, a farmer doesn't take a seed lightly. They know that the seed has to be planted, especially when they know that it has the ability to produce. And your mm. words really have the ability to produce. And you know, really dealing with your future has a lot to do with your words, a lot to do. See what verse 3 says. It says, he that keeps his mouth, keeps his life. You know, the word keeps his mouth means to maintain. I think a lot of us really need to maintain our mouth. I mean, even I sometimes. You know, maintaining our tongue, it could be sometimes hard. But with the help of the Lord, we can come to the place where we are able to maintain it. Mm. You no, know, it doesn't mean we won't make mistakes. And if we make a mistake, sure, God forgives us. And we can uproot those words. Because if, that's, if the words we have spoken are um, words that are going to profit us or words that are full of destruction, we need to remove those seeds out. And say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I uproot those words right now that I spoke. And He will forgive you. And those seeds won't produce. Hmm. And the natural, if a farmer doesn't want that seed to produce, it he will uproot it. it. Yeah. And really, you know, maintaining our tongue is really important. And it says to keep your life. You will maintain your life hmm. when you keep your mouth. When your you mouth. maintain your tongue. You know, also it means to protect. Mm. I think our mouths need a lot of protection sometimes. They do, they do. You know, it says keep your life. Keep your really, life. Really, you know, when you maintain guard your lips. Your life, yeah. yeah, guard your life. Protect. When you keep your tongue, you can really maintain your life. Your life will start to go in the direction of the words you speak. Mm. It's really There's powerful. another good scripture about the tongue and how to guard yourself in the book of James. Mm. And uh, yeah, a lot of people just run their mouth wild. Sometimes I do also. And you, yeah. you know, sometimes when you when you say something, and then nobody else speaks after that, and you hear silence, you can hear your words really clearly because mm. you're the last person who spoke. Yeah. You know, so sometimes we need to think about the words that we speak before we speak them. Mm. And it's like this, you know, in the book of James, chapter three, it talks about the mouth here. And it shows about, you know, how your life can be driven or you can enter into your destiny or you can move away from your destiny even just by the words that you speak. Mm. James chapter 3, uh, it says in a, uh, verse 2, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, able also to bridle or control the whole body. Verse 3 says, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Verse 4, Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, they are driven of fierce winds, yet they turn about with a very small helm, wherever they go. And verse 5 is the key. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasts great things. Behold, how great a fire! How great a matter a little fire kindles. Mm. You know, so our words are really important, you know. When you talk about a ship and you talk about a horse, the ship, let's just take the ship for example, it goes in the direction to reach its destiny, mm. right? And uh, so let's just liken it to ourselves. We walk through this course of life to reach our destiny or our future. So let's just say if the captain decided, I'm not going to steer the wheel. Mm. I'm just going to let the ship be there and let it go wherever it wants. Is it going to get anywhere? It's going to definitely be destroyed. Yeah. And so the, the captain is the one who has to take a hold of that mm. wheel and then turn the ship, direct it where it's supposed to go. Mm. Your words are like that little helm that like talks about here, the, yeah. the yeah. little wheel thing that, you know, like even in a driving, you know, when, you, when you're driving the car, you, turn, you steer the wheel, just let the car run wild without you doing anything, where will it go? 
definitely be destroyed. That's have an exactly accident. Exactly the same thing. And even if you drive it in the wrong direction, mm. you're not going to head to your destiny. Yeah. You're going to head somewhere else. Yeah. So a lot of people, you know, they we uh, we think, you know, okay, this is just a, an example, you know, a, a wheel of a ship or something, but it's true in life. Mm. A lot of people we don't sometimes even I do, sometimes we don't think about the words that we speak and we just speak them out thinking I can say whatever I want. But yeah. you can't. If you want your future to come or you want to see your future, you got to speak some right words. Yeah. And and so to reach your destiny, you need to back your a journey with some words like um, just to say your, uh, you know like I said your future is not just 20 years from now your future could be tomorrow yeah so the words that you say like uh, I feel sick I feel miserable I feel weak I feel bad I feel poor nobody loves me those are words that lead to your future mm. and the thing about seeds is we don't see them the harvest mm, immediately. Yeah. Why? Because even in the natural, the seed it starts growing from the bottom. Mm. It's rooting itself. Yeah. It's becoming stronger from underneath. Yeah. So that it will come up. And so if your if the seeds that you've sown are not good, and even if they get rooted underneath, you're gonna have a tree yeah. full of bad fruit. And you can even liken liken that to saying, you know, you know, you know, we say like certain people say, well, you know, I can't see God, so I won't believe in Him. That's kind of like saying, well, you know, I've planted the seed, but I don't see the harvest already. You know, no, I mean, what I'm trying to say is, well, just because you can't see something happen doesn't mean it's not existing. Hmm. God is there. And one way you can really see is his creation. I mean, that's one of the ways you can see how great he is. Hmm. And the other thing is, when you, when you receive Jesus in your life, you begin to see a sense of difference because he changes your nature. And so that's how you can know that he's there. And you know, words are kind of like that when you think of it. You know, just because you don't see the results of some of the words you've spoken immediately, doesn't mean it isn't working. Yeah. It is working, it is taking place. And another additional thing to the, to the sea captain, the person who wants to go to his destiny or his harbor, mm. he has something with him that helps him uh, direct where he's supposed to go. Mm. Maybe a compass or a yeah. map or something. Yeah. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit is like that guide. He's the one who teaches us and guides us where we should go. Mm. He guides us in all truth, the Bible says. Mm. So he's like that compass. Mm. So if you want to know where your life should be going, if you want to reach the good plan, destiny that God has for you, listen to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He's on the inside of you. When you receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and you receive the Holy Spirit, He comes on the inside of you and you say, Lord, lead me. Like the song that we sang before, lead me in the direction that you want to go. Lead me in the way. Lead me in your truth. Mm, yeah, that's, that's Show really me your good. ways. Yeah, that's really good. And I think words are really powerful because I think that's the first key to knowing, you know, the, the heading of your future, where your future is heading. Knowing that your mm. words are actually directing your future. Mm. And when we realize that thing, as we read in Proverbs also, that when you keep your mouth, you keep your life. Yeah. And so when you maintain your the direction of your words, you can know where your life is heading. You can know. Now the storms of life are gonna come, Jesus said. But when you're when you're founded on the rock of God's word, and mm. when you're founded, when you're building your foundation by speaking his word out of your mouth, you can be assured that you won't fall. Mm. You know, you may have slipped sometimes and you know things may have happened and you know the, the circumstances of life cannot be stopped. We can't stop that. But we can stop them from causing us to lose our peace and our joy and we can stop that. We can be in the word and say, no, confusion, you're not going to come near me. You know, you're changing the course of your future again. Yeah. You could actually, you know, in the opposite, say something else and then say the negative of it and see a negative situation, circumstance. And so your future has already been, it's like the first step has already been negativity. You know, but you can change that first step again and say, okay, God, I'm going to change that. And I'm going to say, Lord, I'm going to speak your word. Mm. There's a really fine example of the centurion. You know, I, I just love this. Whenever I read this, I'm amazed at the way the centurion spoke to Jesus. We should just quickly go to Matthew. Matthew. Matthew 8. And we're just going to see from verse 5. And we'll read on through verse 10. So it says, verse 5, 
And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. What a terrible situation. He was grievously tormented. Mm. Palsy is a very, it's a deadly disease. And people were in much pain when they were having it. And so this servant, this centurion's servant was facing that illness. And then was servant, Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. A lot of times that's how Jesus went to people. When they were sick, he went and, you know, healed them and prayed for them. Mm. But let's see what the centurion answered. He said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, mm. and my servant shall be healed. Verse 9 says, For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. And verse 10, Jesus, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily or truly I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, nor in Israel. Why did Jesus comment on his faith? Because this man understood the power of spoken words. He understood that he could apply the power of spoken words, not just Jesus, but he now, in, now if you see the centurion was None of them were saved or born again. But the point that you can take from this is that he understood authority and the power of words. Now, the another key that we add to speaking words is authority, speaking mm -hmm. them with authority. Not just speaking, well, maybe God has a future, or God has a future for me, you know, just, you know, just lazily and not sure, like, but speaking with authority. And this man, he said to Jesus, Jesus, you speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Now, was the servant healed? No, he was having the palsy, but the centurion knew the power of words and he spoke over that man's future. You know, that man could have died if the centurion would have said, well, Jesus, you know, he's on the verge of dying and he might die and so I'm not sure, but you come and see what you can do. Now, those are death-filled words, mm. but his words were so powerful. Yeah, the centurion recognized something in Jesus. Mm. Jesus submitted to authority. Mm. And that's why Jesus could speak authoritative words. Yeah. So when you realize the centurion, he actually knew what authority is all about. Mm. Authority is actually power or the ability to do something that um, you can, you like say, let's just say somebody has authority over you mm. and that person can tell you go and do this mm. you know like a captain or a um, soldier or a policeman or somebody they have authority to tell you do this and you have to do it it's like a command yeah so your words are like the servant mm. you speak and your words have to perform yeah. they have to accomplish yeah what you and say he, yeah he took the he spoke his words in the, in the direction that he wanted it to go mm. he spoke it he knew my servant shall be healed. The key there is speak the word only. Speak the he didn't tell Jesus, speak the word and maybe if you're unsure, just tell me if you're unsure. No, he said, Jesus, speak the word. Hmm. And what was the word? Be healed. And he spoke it and he changed the future of that servant's life. Hmm. All because he knew what authority was and the power of words. Hmm. And, and so many times, you know, when you read actually, when you see in the, in the word that the many of the people they marveled at the way Jesus spoke because his words were full of authority he didn't just speak them plainly he spoke them with authority mm -hmm. and when you're speaking over your future and declaring God's great word for your life speak it with authority don't just you know say well maybe it'll happen maybe uh, okay yeah it'll happen speak with authority and say yes I know that it'll happen God mm -hmm. has prosperity lined up in my future Mm -hmm. God has healing lined up in my Amen. future. Speak them with authority. That's another mm -hmm. key. So we see declaring for your future is to speak his words, but also speaking them with authority. Because when you speak with authority, you're getting your angels to work for you. And we have yeah. been given power and authority. Yeah. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you, Jesus said, I give unto you power yeah. and authority yeah. to tread over all the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, so see, the devil doesn't hold your future. He can't 
intervene and say anything about your future. He may suggest, you know, do this, do that, but mm. you make the decision to do it. Mm. And even God, you know, God doesn't hold our future. Yeah. Our words hold our future. Yeah. You know, God can instruct us, He can guide us and lead us, but ultimately we are the ones who need to speak authoritative words that will bring us to our future. Yeah. Even when you see creation, nothing just happened. God spoke words and with authority. I'm sure when He said, let there be light, you would have said it really powerfully. Let there be light. You would have said it, you know, you can't even imagine how he would have said it. But mm -hmm. he said it with authority and it was. And, it did, yes. and you know, like we said earlier, words are seeds. So maybe you've started speaking the word, but you're not immediately seeing the results happen. Just wait, give it time. Just like a seed, you need to give it time. You, you know, you need to water and you need to, you know, keep it, you know, in the right temperature and all of that. You know, even your words, once you've spoken it, just start thanking and praising That's God that they're working. The seed. That is watering the seed. It's really important that you water the seed. You know, once is good, but say it over and over again is the key. Really say it over and over you again. closer and closer. Because yeah. you don't see sometimes what happens in the spirit realm. I mean, we, we could, you know, God could reveal to us, God could show us what's happening. But normally you can just see with these physical eyes, maybe your situation has not changed yet. But it is turning around in the spirit realm. Mm. You may not see it with your physical eyes, but something is happening yeah. in the spirit realm. Yeah, that's, that's really powerful. So even as the centurion directed his words in the direction that he wanted it to go, so can you. You know, as we said in the last program about the woman with the issue of blood, hmm. you know, she did the same thing. She directed her words. We quickly go to that scripture also, because we're giving you examples from God's word so you can know that God's word really works and it is designed to work over your future. And the future doesn't have to be a place where you're unknown or unsure about it. When you speak God's words, you can know it. And we're very quickly going to see about this story. And um, we're going to see in Mark, Mark chapter 5. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Now, um, maybe you can read uh, Mark 5, verse 25 through 34. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we know this woman, she'll just give it in brief. She had an issue of blood and she'd suffered many things and you know, no doctors could heal her at all. And, but then one day she heard of Jesus. Now she was suffering in this condition for 12 years. 12 years is a long time to be suffering. But then she heard of Jesus. You know, when you hear God's words, it enlightens you, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It brings faith. And it brought faith into this woman. And she said, I'm gonna to touch his garment and I know I shall be whole. Again, she changed the direction of her future. I shall be whole. And when, when she touched the um, hem of Jesus' garment, Jesus knew virtue had gotten out of him. And so he said, he said, I know somebody has touched me and I, can, I know that something has gone out of me. And then when this woman comes, she was trembling. She, she comes and Jesus says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be whole of your plague. Now I want uh, the key that here is again that she spoke the word. She spoke what she desired. She spoke it over her future. That is the key. It's, mm. it's similar to the account of the centurion. There like, were, yeah, the yeah, Bible says um, faith comes by hearing the yeah. word of God. Yeah. But you are the first person to hear your words, mm. right? So faith, if faith comes by hearing the word, word of God. And as you speak the word of God, faith arises within you. Yeah. A preacher can preach the word, but you know when faith arises, when you speak the word, mm. that's when you can see results. That's when faith arises, by speaking his word. And so even today, we're going to close the program and pray. And you know, we've kind of repeated quite a lot of things even in this study. And one of the, one of the great things that you can know is God can restore your life. You can. You know, we, couldn't, we didn't have much time to go into Joel and see how God can restore your life. Mm. But God is able to restore. Even if the past has been bad, like we saw in Paul's life, still he decided, I'm going to press toward the mark. Because when God comes, he can change it and your future can be changed. Mm. So let's pray right now. And, you know, even as we pray, let's believe that God is doing a great thing in your future. He mm. is a God who restores. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. 
Lord, we know that you are a God who hears us. Father, you said where two or more are gathered in your name, you are there. And right now, even as I pray for the audience, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are doing a great work inside of them. Lord, you have promised us a hope and a future and expected end. And I thank you that even as they take these words of life and apply them, Father, show them in your word how they can speak your promises because your promises are full of life and they are full of joy and peace, Father. You never put us down, Father, but you always lift, lift us, Father. And we thank you for doing a great work in our future. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.